Hello and welcome to this screencast on ergogenic aids. Specifically, we're going to focus on nutritional aids and these four down here. So we've looked at uh, pharmacological and physiological. We're going to look at nutritional. We're going to start with creatine, caffeine, bicarbonate and nitrate. So first of all, a question that you might um, be given. We've seen questions similar to this before. Explain the benefits and possible drawbacks of the following nutritional ergogenic aids to improve performance. So by the end of the lesson um, and the screencast, I hope you'll be able to answer this one here. So, first of all, nutritional aid is taken as a dietary supplement to enhance performance. And as I've just previously said, these are the four we're going to be looking at today. We're going to continue with our answer framework, categorise the ergogenic aid, describe it, legality, is it aerobic or anaerobic benefits, and advantages and disadvantages to that. So, first one, creatine, okay? So, Nutritional aid taken as dietary supplements to enhance performance. We're looking at creatine. The description for creatine, so categorise nutritional aid. Description, naturally produced and stored in the muscle cell as phosphocreatine. Now, doing the ATP PC system, we should all know this. We should know that PC is stored in the muscle sarcoplasm. Okay, so as well as it being stored, it can actually be synthetically administered as well. And this is known as creatine monohydrate. Okay, so this is important. So creatine monohydrate is the synthetically administered version of creatine. So hopefully already with knowing that um, it's naturally, naturally produced, stored in the muscle cell as phosphocreatine, and we can synthetically administer its creatine monohydrate, now we should be thinking, okay, PC, we know aerobically, aerobic or anaerobic, which one is going to benefit. So legal, it is legal, okay, so people can use it um, to help with um, gym workouts, etc., to help with sprinting activities. So we're looking at weightlifters and sprinters as the um, sporting examples. And then the advantages to um, taking creatine monohydrate are... <coughs> first of all, we get increased PC stores, which lead to an increased energy production for ATP PCC so system, so actual activity. Increased maximum and explosive strength, as well as reduced fatigue in high intensity activity, as well as increased recovery. However, the risks that are associated with creatine monohydrate are increased weight gain, water retention, and gastrointestinal problems, i.e. stomach issues. So, there are our um, notes on creatine and monohydrate. Please make sure you have get down key questions for each particular section of this that'd be great so the next nutritional aid we're going to be looking at is caffeine so we're going to categorize it describe it legality aerobic anaerobic advantage disadvantage so caffeine is a stimulant that heightens the central nervous system okay we all know caffeine is found in coffee it's found in red bull it is found in monster drinks so we should all be familiar with caffeine as a stimulant and as i said it heightens the central nervous system it is legal Okay, and it is good for aerobic activities such as middle long distance athletes, such as middle long distance runners or cyclists. Performance benefits, it stimulates fat metabolism. Now, if you think now, if we go back to the aerobic energy system, if we can utilize um, fats before glycogen, it means we're not depleting our glycogen stores, so we also get greater aerobic energy production from. Um, fat than we do from glycogen so it stimulates fat metabolism which is obviously really good for aerobic energy production so it allows glycogen sparing so we say about glycogen stores and as well as that it helps with increased focus and attention now the risks associated with caffeine dehydration gastrointestinal problems okay so they are two um, disadvantages that we probably knew before we even looked at this just then with regards to caffeine. <coughs> as well as that, it can lead to anxiety and insomnia as well. So it's important to know that as well as dehydration and gastrointestinal problems, it can lead to anxiety and insomnia. Okay, so looking at bicarbonate, description of it, it is an alkaline taken one hour before an event, okay? Soda low it's called. This is really important, one hour before an event. Remember that. So alkaline is taken one hour before an event. That time is important. It is legal and it helps with anaerobic work such as sprinters. The benefits of it are we get an increased buffering capacity. Therefore, we get an increased tolerance to lactic acid. We should know by now these two are said very um, closely linked to each other. Um, and it delays obla as well as meaning we have an increased intensity and duration of performance.
the risk associated are nausea and gastrointestinal problems with bicarbonate. bicarbonate. Finally, nitrates. Nitrates are consumed by eating root vegetables such as beetroot and taking um, beetroot supplements. We've got it is legal. It's good for aerobic activities such as middle and long distance athletes. And we need to look at or be aware of. It's really good for vasodilation of blood vessels, um, allowing for increased oxygen transport to the working muscles, reduce fatigue, as well as increased intensity and duration of performance. This is always going to happen if we have reduced fatigue taking place, as well as decreased blood pressure. Now, the risks associated with it are dizziness and headaches, as well as possible carcinogenic risks. Okay, so there are our corner notes for um, our lesson on nutritional aids. Please get down good key questions um, with that, and we'll um, go from there. Thank you.